You can't be stressing. You have to really enjoy these moments because this is the most fun you're going to have in basketball. I worked hard to get to this point. Every game, come in with confidence. My game is running strong. Ain't no cool I'm wrong. I've been in the trenches and won't be that way for long ago. Like... Kawhi Leonard is one hell of a basketball player. When healthy, he's a top five player in the league. Let me be very clear about that. It's without question. I say that so what I'm about to say next doesn't come across as unduly disrespectful in any way. And that would be this. I would not give Kawhi Leonard a long-term contract. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. As great as Kawhi Leonard is on both ends of the court, he also spends a lot of time on the side of the court, sitting in the damn chair. He still missed the load management, y'all. He hasn't played more than 60 regular season games in four years. And now he's coming off an ACL injury, an ACL surgery, heading into his 11th season in the league. He's 30, y'all, 30, with no idea when he'll actually be back on the court. Kawhi Leonard is a lot of things as a basketball player. A lot of great, phenomenal things. No doubt about it. But here's one thing he's not. He's not a culture builder. He's not a marketer. Nor is he a promoter. Not with his personality. You can't sell tickets off the man considering you never know when he'll actually suit up. And just imagine the load management he'll require coming off a serious knee injury. A big money, one or two year, prove it type deal for Kawhi Leonard. I'm down with that. Get a man what he wants for one or two years. I don't give a damn if it's 100 million dollars. Take it. Maybe he comes back 100%. Maybe even get your ring. But a long term deal? I'd have to think real hard about that one. And I think the Clippers know they should think real hard about it too. They really, really need to think about that. Seriously. Give Kawhi whatever he wants. I'm going to repeat it one last time. Do whatever he wants. One, two years. Don't commit to that brother more than two years. Unless he's going to show you the kind of commitment you haven't seen from him. Marketing, promoting, actually playing a lot of games and not doing too much load management. Yeah, I said it. Because it needed to be said. Pian the Kawhi Leonard re-signing with the L.A. Clippers. Leonard declining a player option for $36 million before free agency began on Monday. He had that surgery to repair the partially torn ACL in July. He is expected to miss a whole lot of time while doing his rehab. Now, no doubt Kawhi's impact has been felt on the Clippers. Last year, the Clippers had a net efficiency of plus 17.6 when Leonard and Paul George were both on the court, second best among two-man lineups. That fell to plus 3.5 with just George on the court. For context, that would have ranked eighth among teams last regular season. Our front office insider Bobby Marks with us now on SportsCenter. Bobby, take us through the contract options that Kawhi is discussing with the Clippers right now. You're right, Jay. There's two different options that Kawhi Leonard is contemplating as far as re-signing with the Clippers. The first is a two-year contract for $82 million that would have a player option for that second year. And what that would allow him to do is become a free agent next offseason and sign a five-year, $242 million uh, contract to remain with, with the Clippers. Or the second option is a four-year, $175 million contract uh, to remain with the Clippers. So two different options for Leonard. And Jay, I think the one thing that's important to note is that although we're about five days into free agency and Leonard is just committing, uh, the Clippers and Leonard were in communication during the last three or four days. And there was no um, there was no second thought that he was never returning back to this organization. All right. Uh, with that done or getting done, there's some other big news out of the NBA today. We'll take you through that. Kevin Durant planning on signing a four-year, $198 million maximum contract extension with the Nets sometime after he becomes eligible tomorrow. That's what his longtime business manager and co-founder of 35 Ventures in the boardroom, Rich Kleiman, told our Adrian Wojnarowski. KD expected to decline his 2022-23 player option and extend off his $42 million salary for next season. So, Bobby, what does KD's extension 
and mean for the Nets' big three going forward? Yeah, Jay, he's the first domino to go. And when you look at Durant's extension, four years, 198, as, as you mentioned, uh, I'm expecting James Harden to be the next player to sign an extension. Harden can sign an extension for three years, $161 million. Then following that is the third player, which is Kyrie Irving. And when you total it up, when we get through this offseason, a likely $540 million in extension money, which is a whopping number, considering two years from now, all three players will be making at least $50 million per season. I'd like to see them on the court together at the same time. This past season, including the playoffs, KD, Kyrie, and James Harden only played 14 total games together. Bobby Marks, always a pleasure. Thank you, bro. As for the Lakers, it has been an incredibly busy offseason for LeBron and Anthony Davis, I wonder what they're saying right now. Just started with uh, adding the former NBA MVP, Russell Westbrook, in a blockbuster trade with the Wizards, where Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, Contavious Caldwell Pope, and the number 22 pick in last month's NBA draft went to Washington. Then LA agreed to terms with four former Lakers, Dwight Howard, Trevor Ariza, Wayne Ellington, and Kent Bazemore. Howard and Ariza both won titles with LA in their previous stints. And most recently, the Lakers bringing in 10-time All-Star, Carmelo. Hello, Anthony, on a one-year deal. The Lakers now have two of the top ten scores in NBA history. Age is just a number. Dwight, a little humble here coming back to L.A. I played with, you know, arguably uh, the greatest player in the NBA, uh, with Kobe. Now playing with LeBron and A.D. and Russ and Carmelo. It's like a dream. I feel like I belong, honestly. Uh, I just want to bring in. Uh, my strengths here and fit alongside the guys in the locker room. Three-point shooting is a premium, premium in the league right now. Um, you got all these guys that are attackers that can get to the paint that uh, create so much attention. Um, got to have a guy like myself to kick it out to. No, I want to continue to improve my three-point shooting. Uh, just all around, just continue my playmaking. A lot of different things like that. So just being able to, you know, grow around this group is going to be amazing for me. It is well documented at this point, but the Lakers have plenty of experience on the roster. Four of the top five active players in career games played are currently on the Lakers. That's a lot of tread on the tires, but mm -hmm. also a lot of game experience. If LeBron, Melo, and Dwight Howard, and Trevor Ariza all play opening night, the Lakers would be the first team ever to have four players with a thousand plus games of experience play on opening night. Brooklyn Nets star Kevin Durant does indeed plan to sign that four-year, 192 sign that four-year, 198 million dollar extension that we have been talking about all week. He will become eligible on Saturday, and this is part of what will be more than half a billion dollars, people. 580 million dollars in contracts that the big three in Brooklyn are expected to sign. I mean, Jackie, that number alone is is just crazy. It's staggering, but I think we saw this when they brought on James Harden. They were serious about doing whatever it takes to get to the finish line. I'm actually really happy for Kevin Durant. I think it's a great place for him. It's, it's a, you know, really a place to establish himself as the greatest Brooklyn Nets player perhaps that ever played. So uh, I think this makes sense for him. I think he's done moving around. Hats off to the Tsai family for yeah. coming in and really just reshaping that organization and doing what it has to do, even if that means going to the luxury tax to build an exciting team. And they're definitely going to reap the benefits from championships uh, from here on out. Yeah, I mean, woof. I think, you know, you know you're giving that money once you make that trade, right? And every other team in the league would do the same do if they could. But the fact that Brooklyn is able to, both in terms of having those bodies in the gym and then having an owner who can, in, for, in fact, put forth that much moolah. Man, it's just a lot <laughs> thinking about it. More than half a billion dollars is going to be agreed to this offseason between just those big three in Brooklyn. All right, a little breaking news. Circle around if you're just joining us. Bobby Marks on this show confirmed that Kawhi Leonard will return to the Clippers. Terms still being discussed, but Jackie, how do the Clippers move forward with Kawhi back? And he's going to be rehabbing most, if not all, of this season. Well, this was a marriage that, you know, you were talking before about off the record things that go on. I think this was always going to happen for Kawhi. I think he made it clear. He's home that the Clippers have made so many allowances to him in terms of his own personal training staff, you know, being able to go home to San Diego. And I always just, I'll say it again, $36 million is what he turned down with a torn ACL. It is good to be Kawhi Leonard. And you know what? 
he actually de he deserves it. Agreed. I, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone. I kind of just think it was optics when he initially opt out to right. just kind of weigh the market. For next year, he has stressed multiple times he has not publicly requested a trade to the Blazers, who of course themselves have stayed pretty quiet during free agency. And Dame did give his thoughts, though, on Portland's move so far. Take a listen. You know, we wasn't able to go out there and just get, you know, some of the guys that um, we would have liked. And, you know, you go down the list and you go go through the guys that, that you like that are out there that haven't committed to another team or that was a part of your, your plans in free agency. And you get the ones that, you know, that want to be a part of what you're doing. And I think that's what we did. All right. So hearing that, Bobby, what should we look for next with Dame's future in Portland? Yeah, I think this is going to play out a little bit, Rachel. I think Lillard will go to training camp. I, I expect them to be in a Trailblazer uniform. And this is something that will, when we get to December or January, based on where this Portland team is, and he looks at the pieces that are around him. I mean, they brought Norman Powell back, but then it was all bargain shopping. Cody Zeller, Ben McLemore, Tony Snell. That's kind of your, your bench for the, the veteran minimum. And they don't have much out there except for maybe flipping CJ McCollum. So I think this, this plays out. And the season will basically dictate as far as what Lillard's future is going to be here in Portland. Matt, it's an interesting position for him as a player because one of the sort of 